Hi, this is the uh, fourth and final uh, session in our look at the um, the four passion stories, according to the four evang evangelists, Matthew, mm -hmm. Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, each week we've yeah. looked at uh, we've looked at one of the passion and the, by passion stories, remember, we're just talking about the stories that are specifically around his his uh, uh, arrest, uh, trial and crucifixion. Um, typically, we think of the passion story as beginning with um, uh, Palm Sunday and the uh, triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Um, uh, but in in several uh, in in Mark's gospel that we went to first because it was the first one written, it's very 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 quick from the time Jesus goes into the city. Then they have the the Lord's Supper, you know what we now call the Lord's Supper, and then they go out to Gethsemane, and he is uh, he's arrested, and uh, and that that's it. In um, in Matthew and in and in Luke and especially in John, as we'll see when we get there, uh, there is there's a time between Palm Sunday and what we call Monday Thursday, where Jesus is in or back and forth in, in Jerusalem. It appears that he's in Jerusalem. Um, and then he goes to Bethany where his friends, um, Martha and Mary and Lazarus live. And he, he kind of, hangs out with them but then comes back into jerusalem it's just about a uh it's uh just the uh, uh bethany is just over the hill from <laughs> the from where jesus would have gone which is the temple so it's not far away at all maybe three miles maybe less than that probably less than that uh um bethlehem is like three miles away from jerusalem bethany is I think less than a mile. Anyway, um, in 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 the the later gospels, not Mark, um, Jesus, uh, we have stories of Jesus teaching during those three or so days between when he went into Jerusalem and when he got arrested. Um, we are. Um, we are in, uh, we're just finishing up with Luke. Uh, we're at the uh, Luke, uh, the 22nd chapter and the 24th verse. Um, Luke has just, um, has just narrated the uh, uh, institution of the Lord's Supper. It's very, very similar to Mark and very similar to Matthew. There are, there are small elaborations uh but uh but but then uh we go into in luke we go into uh some of the teachings that go on by that jesus does during what we now would would think of as holy week um i'm going to pick up at verse 34 i mean 24 a dispute also arose among them i just i love this right after the Lord's Supper. <laughs> a dispute also arose among them. Them is the disciples, as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. I confer on you just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, 
and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, let's back up to that. Uh, I, I am among you as one who serves. Um, in John's gospel that we're going to get to in a few minutes, this is hugely and dramatically played out in the washing of the disciples' feet. So here it just shows up as a, as a theme and a teaching. In John's gospel, that theme is acted out. We'll get to that shortly. Um, verse 31, Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go to, with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Um. Then there's a, a, a little bit more of a teaching, and it's a, 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 a part of the teaching that Jesus did in the in the temple or in Jerusalem during that week. Uh, I want to uh, skip to verse 39. Uh, he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Um, remember in Luke uh, Jesus goes three times. He prays, prays three times in Gethsemane. And we have a little bit more, um, um, a, a, a slightly different fleshing out of what Jesus said in his prayer. Uh, we, of course, I mean, there was nobody there. So we don't know the source. But the evangelists essentially agree uh, that the gist of the prayer was, um, I, I would love to be saved from this, but if this is necessary because of your plan, Father, then your will be done. So it's a giving, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, um, it's a very uh, explicit uh, reminder that Jesus is giving his life willingly. While he was I still speaking, go ahead, question. I, gonna, I have a question. Okay. Um, about the part where it says, um, get up, he says to the, the disciples who are with him get up and um and pray that you will well now I forgot what the other part was that you, you will may not, not undergo the test or the trial. Yes, basically. To me, that's kind of significant too, because I mean, what is he actually he it sounds to me like he's saying there, pray that you won't become a part of this ordeal also or something like yeah. that i mean what is he really referring to there I, th I think that's a that's a really good question 
um, that you may, may not come into the time of trial that he is now coming into. Right. And he is, mm -hmm. he is hoping that they won't. And many of them ended up having very similar kinds of arrests and executions. Um, but, but, um, uh, his his prayer for them was that they be spared. Does that does that help? Terry. Terry. Yes, I I muted myself. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, All it, right. It does help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. While he was still speaking, uh. Suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed it. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. When they seized him and led him away, beginning uh, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, giving him, uh, seeing him in the in the firelight stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. That's the passage I was referring to last week that that uh, has been um, kind of reproduced in art, particularly in in uh, in uh, med medieval and and even Renaissance art that that glance between Jesus and Peter. And it's just, you know, G on, on Jesus's part, it's always love. On Peter's part, it's always um, regret. Terror. Yeah, um, not, not terror. Sorrow. Sorrow, extreme sorrow, yeah. You can just you can just I think probably picture in your mind that that uh, encounter. Um, <clears throat> um, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. It's interesting. We don't know why they were in the in the vicinity of each other at that point. Jesus was in the trial. Uh, Peter was out in the courtyard, but. In any case, then Peter remembered the words. The Lord. Uh, of the Lord, how he had said to him before the cock grows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now, the men who th that that account is pretty much the same as we have in in Matthew. There's not much, um, not much elaboration in there. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. 
They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they kept heaping other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. Now, this is the Jewish authorities. This is not any kind of representative government, but it is the religious authorities who, with whom the Roman government interacted. So the Roman government more or less recognized the Jewish authorities as being the local, not quite government, but local authorities in Judea. Um, and um, so in, in, in this case, they're, they're all gathered um, and it's the council of the Jewish uh, authorities. When the, uh, they came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked him, are you then the son of God? He said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. Here again, they're the local authorities but they don't have real governing authority. They have to go to Pilate, who represents, who is the representative of the Roman of the Roman Empire. Question? No. Okay. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying. We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. Um, Herod was appointed by the Romans as king of um, the the area north of Jerusalem, or north. Of, I'm sorry, north of Judea, uh, and he was he he was a um, <clears throat> second or th I think third generation king, but had been appointed by the Romans. So it wasn't like he was descended from King David or anything like that. He was, uh, uh, his father or grandfather had been friends with Caesar Augustus, the first emperor. And he said, we need, we need a king over there in Galilee. Yeah, I think the, th the crown might fit you. You know, so that's that's how that's how Herod got there. Uh, but that was outside the jurisdiction of Judea, which is where um, Pontius Pilate was the authority. So Pontius Pilate, wanting to get rid of the case, 
finds out that Jesus is Galilean, which is part of Herod's territory, and refers him to Herod. It happens that Herod, the king, is in Jerusalem for the Passover. Same reason that Jesus went into Jerusalem. Same reason that there were such big crowds there um, at, that, at that time. Um, so Herod is in Jerusalem. Um, Pontius Pilate sends him over to, uh, to Herod's uh, palace. And that's where we pick this up. Any questions? Um, when Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had, he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. Um, some of you probably, I hope you're familiar with uh, the scene in Jesus Christ Superstar, where um, it's Jesus bef before Herod, and it's it, it's a and it's an extremely campy song, but the point is that Herod, it's this it, this wonderful song. Uh, the point is that Herod wants Jesus to perform a miracle, and it's. Um, if if you get a chance, you can. I'm sure you can download it. It oh, wow. is. It's a hilarious yes. little ditty, I guess I would call it. But uh, uh, but it but it picks up. I mean, it, it's it's so consistent with this um, what uh, what the story the way Luke tells it. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found him guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to des deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. That's the, that's a humane thing to do. <laughs> I'll just I want to try to get rid of this prisoner. We'll just flog him and then send him on his way. Uh, Joanne joined us. Then they all. Oh, good. Then they all shouted out together away with this fellow release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flog, flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. Um, uh, Matthew um, Matthew has this Barabbas part, but tells it tells it a little bit differently. Um, he's a little bit more in the in a, in the head of Pilate, um, trying to um, figure out how to how to 
let Jesus go free. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they, they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Um. Yes, uh, I, I, oh, was somebody else going to say something? Go um, ahead. I had a, I had a thought. Um, the part where, where um, it relates to the story of how they they get this fellow Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross and follow behind Jesus is significant because cross is very heavy it's you know so this right. they this guy probably didn't even volunteer to do this they just said here right. you're going to carry right. jesus cross but it's truly a burden for him in many of the uh descriptions they didn't carry the full cross the upright poles were in the ground permanent. they were they were permanent yeah and then they carried the crossbar. Yeah. Right. So yeah. not quite as bad. Interesting. Right. Yeah. It is inter interesting. Yeah. I want to I want to read you a note um, about that. That there's a little saying at the end. Let's see. For if they Jesus, for if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Does that mean yeah. anything to anybody? Yeah, the, the green wood is much heavier than the dry wood. Mm -hmm. mm. Wet. Yeah, it's wet. Okay. It's got moisture in it. It's yeah, wet all and the it's moisture. Fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, here's what the um, note in my Bible says. Um, although local officials handed Jesus over to the Roman authorities, only Rome had the authority to crucify someone. This power to torture people to death in public allowed Rome to demonstrate, when necessary, that it had no moral limits on what it would do to maintain peace. The saying, therefore, means something like this. If Rome puts one Jew to death when there is no rebellion, just think what they will do when there is a rebellion. The original readers of Luke would have witnessed Rome's response to the first Jewish revolt, which took place in 66 to 70. Some sources say that one million Jews were killed. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem was besieged and defeated and the temple was burned and leveled. So the readers of Luke, for, for them, that is history. And that's part of their understanding of um, uh, where they're emerging from Judaism. And it's essentially from, from this author, Luke's point of view, that Judaism is more or less defunct and Christianity has moved on in its, in its place. Interesting. Any questions I, about that? Go ahead. I, I can't help but you're reading that and it just, I can't help but think of the war that's going on right now between uh -huh. Palestine and Israel. There are 
for me, there are some awful parallels there too, you know, and this yep. is part of history also. Any other questions or comments? So uh, picking up verse 32, two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. We've talked about that in the, the two previous gospels. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding Jesus and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's, that's for me, one of the most powerful, um, both, both the Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then this declaration on Jesus' part, uh, he's declaring that he and the criminal will be in the in paradise tonight uh, soon um, and I, I think it's it's um, it, it's kind of the, the the understanding that Jesus has the power to save even a condemned presumably murderer or some kind of you know very very bad thing that he did to get crucified um jesus forgives and saves it so was now about go ahead oh i'm sorry technically this it just occurs to me then technically um maybe this criminal is the first person that was saved following the crucifixion of death and resurrection well he hadn't risen yet but yeah so the crucifixion of jesus this yeah, criminal was it's... the first person to be saved and apparently even before easter right before yeah, the resurrection. I was just thinking it. I hadn't that's thought of an, that before. That's a very yeah. interesting perspective. Yeah. And there's the also the interesting thing about the comma. Which one? Well, if you said Oh yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Depends if you put the comma before or after the word today. Right. Changes the whole meaning around. And people people have not thought but uh, argued over that. Oh, yes. um, Greek Greek doesn't have punctuation, mm -hmm. so it's not like there's a there's a comma there in the earliest manuscripts because the earliest manuscripts are in uh, in Greek and it didn't have any punctuation. Thank so, you. but in English, uh, the the point that sh that uh, that uh, Marge is raising. Uh, 
you would say, truly, I tell you, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. Or, truly, I tell you today, yeah. you will be with me in paradise. That could just be an indefinite future. Right, that's true too, yeah. Which leads to the concept of purgatory. Right. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> I've got the come after you. <laughs> so there's today yeah. be with me in paradise. <laughs> right. Sticking with that. That's what I does too, but I can remember when I was growing up, there was a big discussion. <laughs> the, the between Catholics and Protestants was the placement of the comma. Right. Never heard that one. <laughs> I've, I have, I've heard it. <laughs> so uh, verse 44, it was now about noon. Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God. Isn't that an interesting thing? Yeah. The centurion, the, each, each of these four, each of these three gospels has the centurion making a statement at the death of Jesus, but they don't all agree. I mean, they're, they're in the same category, I guess you would say, but uh, it's uh, very interesting. When the centurion saw uh, what, what had taken place, he praised God and said, certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women had come from the women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Any questions or comments regarding Luke's telling of the, the passion story, narrative? No, but there sure are some differences in Luke. I mean, in uh, John. Yes, we'll, we're going there right now. So, uh, any 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 um, other questions or comments about Ma uh, Mark, Matthew, or Luke? I guess the only question I had, and maybe it's maybe it's not relevant for here, but the name of the uh, of the place that they went to, Golgotha, the name is called the Skull. That's always intrigued me. There must be some significance to that somehow, but I don't know if it has to do with the story or some other thing. And that that's the only question I have. What what I have what I have heard and I can't verify this. What I have heard was that in ancient times, this um, this little hill um, was outside the uh, outside the the uh, city wall of Jerusalem, just outside the wall, and it was basically a 
a, a little hill that had the had the sh shape of a skull. Oh, okay. not like not like it was carved or anything. It was just one of those yeah. natural phenomena that you would you'd say, oh, wow, that looks like a skull. And that's where yeah. they did. That's where the Romans did the executions in those days. Oh. Um, if if you go to Jerusalem now, what they what they present, and this is at the Church of the Resurrection, um, uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, what they present is in one corner of that church is what they consider the rock that was um, Golgotha. Oh, or cal okay. or or Calvary, um, and then and then in the rest of the church is is the burial chamber um, of of Jesus. So it's it's very very closely closely connected. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Let's. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. I think we said we're starting at at eighteen. Let me see if we need to go before that. Thirteen. What did we were? I was chapters thirteen, eighteen, and nineteen. Thirteen of John, yeah, washing of the feet. Oh, yes. Talks about the Passover feast, but the, doesn't say any words. Like we, the other gospel said, I found that quite interesting. Yeah. So let me just go back one more. Chapter 13. Okay, in chapter 13. Um, we saw in in the other three gospels, uh, we saw the um, this Passover meal, um, and um, one of the reasons that John is different from the other the other three is that in John's gospel, in in the other three. In their timeline, the Lord's Supper takes place on Thursday, um, and um, and that and and that was that was Passover. In John's Gospel, the Lord's Supper. Let me try and see if I can make that. It, in in John's gospel the the Lord's Supper itself is not narrated the way we the way we understand it we're going to read about uh, about that but in John's gospel Jesus was crucified on the same day it was called the day of preparation preparation for the Passover Sabbath so, in Jerusalem, on the day that Jesus was crucified, many, 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 many people would have been slaughtering the lamb that they were going to be serving that night and, uh, yeah, that night as Passover began. And it's it's in kind of it's an important theme in John's gospel. He never slams it home. You have to kind of read between the lines, but it it is an an important teaching in God, in John's gospel that uh, Jesus is that Paschal Lamb, and um, and that of course becomes a central. Um, a central tenant of our faith 
and a and and also a um, a theme for uh, a theme for worship. Um, <clears throat> any questions about that? Uh, chapter thirteen. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Oh, I should mention one other um, important theme to listen for, especially as we go through the passion, the passion narrative. But it's a theme throughout John's gospel is that Jesus throughout the gospel is ascending toward the throne. And when he is, when he is crucified, he, he symbolically in, in John's gospel, Jesus is enthroned on the cross. He, he rules because of the cross. Um, and it's um, last Sunday or the Sunday before, I think it was the Sunday before, um, we had the um, uh, story of the serpents in the wilderness biting the Israelites, and then um, Moses making the bronze serpent that they could look at and be saved. And Jesus, in his teaching in what was the gospel for that Sunday, uh, uh, says, uh, just as Moses lifted the, the bronze serpent and people were saved, so I, when I am lifted up, will draw all people to myself. So it's, it's a it's a an act of salvation that's also it's an it's a an active uh, uh, God uh, in Jesus is actively reaching out to embrace the whole world for God so loves the world we heard that just this last week or the week before I guess um so so listen for these um ascending the throne and 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 kind of Jesus authority throughout the throughout the story he's not he's not just a victim Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the father having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his, his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that, had, that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, also my hands and my head. Peter, Peter, Peter. Typical Peter. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, Jesus said, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Um, I, 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 uh, very recently read a an, an interesting commentary 
on the foot washing and the understanding that Jesus washed Judas's feet. Judas was still here when Jesus did the foot foot washing. So Jesus went around to the 12 disciples around the table, presumably knowing, in, at least in the other three Gospels, he, kn he knew that Peter was going to deny him. And here he knows that Judas is going to betray him. And yet he washes their feet. It's, it's, it's just very profound to me. I have a, an interesting note also in my Bible. Uh -huh. The act of washing another's, another's feet was one that could not be required of the lowliest Jewish slave. It is an allusion to the humiliating death of the crucifixion. That's good. Yeah, good, good commentary. Yeah. yeah. It is After, a good comment. Yeah. Somebody, somebody else have a comment? I, I think that's a very profound commentary. Yeah. yeah. After Jesus had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should, should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfill scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs. So when it occurs, when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Uh, now, again, in my Bible, you may believe that, and in capital letters, I am. Ah, okay. And that's Yahweh. That's Yahweh. Yahweh, yes, yes. Okay. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me re uh, receives him who sent me. Then I'm just I'm going to jump to verse 31, because this... Um, yeah. um, this is where the, kind of this this concludes. Uh, oh, there, there's then the um, Jesus foretells uh, his betrayal, and uh, Simon gets up and leaves. Uh, so, uh, Judas, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. Judas Iscariot, um, and then we're. Uh, back at the um, the foot washing, essentially. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Um, <clears throat> John is by far the preachiest of the four uh, of, of the four uh, evangelists, and um, um, records 
um, I, I think I think I would say more of the ethos of Jesus, not just not just some parables and and so on. Although he records great parables also, but um, the um, the the way that John um, kind of um, in Prior, we, we heard the gospel in a nutshell, for God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son. That That is also from Jesus in the third chapter of, of John. Uh, but here he says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Um, I I reference this a lot in preaching because I think it is absolutely fundamental to our understanding is that we are first loved by God and we have the privilege of responding in kind but it's not our it, it's not that the good that we do is not so that God will love us. It's because we know that we are loved by God and God, God takes pleasure in seeing us do God, what, it, what we call it, God-pleasing things. Mm -hmm. We want to please God, not appease God. We want to please God. We want God to be proud of this child of God. And that, and each of you, of course. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Um, pretty strong indictment of maybe the church in general um how can there possibly be 250 or whatever however many denominations there are in the world christian denominations there are in the world um wow. some some of whom more or less hate each other <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, it's, yeah. it's it's not as bad as it used to be, but right. but but wars have been fought over different understandings of Christianity, and and what what does that say to the work to the non Christian world uh, about how we um, how we obey or disobey Jesus commandment of love comments questions the other day I um listened to an interview by a woman she now lives in New Zealand but she's originally from Michigan she was always questioning her faith and but was raised a, a Christian I don't know some Protestant denomination, but I don't know what one. But because of the kinds of things, in part, not totally, but in uh, because of some of the things you just referenced about the way you know Christians treat each other and ha have and all this sort of thing, he became um, Muslim, and mm. um which I thought was very interesting. There, it was, well, the story is a lot more complicated than that. I think I'm simplifying it. Yeah. Maybe I'm oversimplifying <laughs> it, but I, I thought that was kind of interesting that yeah. you know, she just got tired of all this. And so she is now a member of the Muslim faith, Islam, and is very active in that community over in New Zealand. And she's a retired lawyer and, you know, hmm. Well, 30 years war. 
Right. The yeah. Thirty Years' War in Europe, basically yeah. between the Catholics and the Protestants. Right. Over a comma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, just uh, uh, again, I, I just want to highlight that by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of make a bold statement. Um, I, I think that one of the things that is um, remarkable about Grace Lutheran Church is the love that has has grown in some cases for some generations, but um, the the love, the mutual respect, the uh, respectfulness. Um, and, um, and it, it's, it is, um, I mean, that doesn't mean no disagreements or no, you know, talking behind backs because that happened, we're all human and so on. But I, I think there is a, um, a sense within the congregation of, uh, our being a caring for one another, as well as caring for the wider world uh, mm -hmm. community. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Absolutely. You got that right. Mm -hmm. No dissenters here. <laughs> Mike Drellichars Drelich had a had a little partner there for a, a few minutes. Who did, who is your dog? I can't remember. That's Maisie. Maisie, that's right. Oh, okay. Came by for a minute, but she ran off. <laughs> Short attention span. <laughs> All right. Uh, if like I see if I see any of the rest of you running off, I'll I'll say the same thing. <laughs> so <laughs> Simon Peter said, uh, "Remember, just above that, in part of Jesus' little." Um, um, telling uh telling of the the disciples um he says i'm uh uh i am going where i'm going you cannot come uh then comes the part about uh the love but then simon peter butts in and says uh lord where are you going jesus answered where i am going you cannot follow me now but you will follow afterward Jesus said, or Peter said to him, Lord, why cannot I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have de denied me three times. Um, I, I think that, um, John makes this even more um searing i guess it is where where jesus says uh will you lay down your life for me i mean it's almost it's almost mocking yeah. almost almost uh almost snide um but but then totally correct you know mm -hmm. um do not let your hearts be troubled Believe in God, believe also in me. Now, uh, we're going to skip ahead now. This is um, then the teachings that Jesus does in and around the temple for the next several days. So now we're going to skip to um, chapter 17. Eight, I thought. Eight, I thought it was eighteen. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm going to back up, back up to just a little bit. Uh, to I, I want to, um, I want to read the prayer that Jesus uh, mm -hmm. prays. It's it's kind of well, it's kind of in the um, in the um, uh, 
in the place of the prayer in Gethsemane, although it's not really uh, pre uh, presented as uh, as um, being there. But um, and the uh, chapter seventeen. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, this is this is often called the high priestly prayer, and it's it's basically Jesus prayer. We're overhearing Jesus speaking to the Father and clarifying that the relationship between the Father and the Son himself and the relationship between himself <laughs> and us is one of communion. Um, that we are, that we are bound, bound to one another, and that Jesus, of, of course, is the link between his Father and us. Um, and what, uh, and and this prayer ends with, and he's saying this publicly. The prayer ends with, and I, I I've pointed this out before. I always like when Jesus includes us in something that gets printed in the Bible. And he says, he says, I'm not saying this just for those who are around me now, but also for those who will believe because they've heard. And that's, that's you and me that he's talking about. And I, I just, I love that he had us in mind. Hmm. Uh, uh, chapter 18. After Jesus had spoken these words, um, <clears throat> and that's the long high priestly prayer. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his, his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am. Again, uh, the reference to Yahweh. The, the I am is the kind of the English translation of the uh, Yahweh. Um, <clears throat> Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that had been he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back in its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Uh, that's... Um, um, at least reminiscent of Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane, where he asks that he not have to drink this cup, but not my will, but yours. Uh, so the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, 
the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. That's, uh, that's an earlier reference in John um, to uh, when, the, when the Jewish authorities are getting um, nervous about Jesus and his following, the large following that he's attracted, um, they're afraid, and again, remember that this is written way after the events, including way after the destruction of Jerusalem. Um, but but um, Jesus uh, Jesus is referring to the, um, the 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 fact that. Um, 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 Caiaphas, uh, Caiaphas said, um, it looks like the Romans are getting nervous about this rabble rouser, and they may come down hard on all of us. But we should get we should all. get rid of him. Not them. Uh, it's better, maybe it's better for, that one man should die for the sake of everybody else. Um, that's a very, very clever thing for, uh, for John to put in here because it's, it's, uh, um, it has the Jewish authority, um, Caiaphas, the high priest, basically making the case that one man Jesus should pay with his life for the sake of everyone, which is exactly what Christianity claims Jesus did. happened. Right. And 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 Jesus throughout this is uh on his way. I'm sorry, we're over our time. I got carried away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um uh, Jesus again is is uh, in control. He's on his way to his enthronement on the cross. Um, I guess I better just can, um, ask you to uh, to read the the uh, uh, the rest of that yourself, uh, perhaps again, uh, maybe with some of the insights that we have. Um, shared today, particularly um, the understanding that Jesus, uh, you know, Jesus is in control. Jesus is doing this willingly and is um, is enthroned on the cross. And I, I um, <clears throat> we'll be hearing the uh, passion according to John on um on good friday uh we'll be hearing this whole section so if you want to if you want to uh, read it again and then on good friday you'll hear it again um and i think maybe some of the uh some of the nuances that we've talked about um will um uh, uh, flood into you just a any, little any questions yeah go ahead this is the only one john is the only one that says mary the mother of jesus and this is where he says to john this is your mother and so forth right and that's the only gospel and it was i thought it was kind of interesting yeah yeah and in in, in this one unlike the others jesus uh, mary is at the foot of the cross right. which is what would but I think most of us think of, but the others, the others uh, suggest that the women and the followers were off in the distance, watch, you know, watching in horror, no doubt, what was going on. Um, but um, a, a, again, in in John's gospel, uh, Mary and uh, and others were at his feet, and he. He is magistrating, John. This is this is now your mother. 
mother, this is now your son. Um, we don't know that it's John. It's just the, the so-called disciple whom Jesus loved. But no. it's, um, you know, it, it, it's, go ahead, it, Diane. If I remember from my Bible studies a long time ago, John supposedly is the only one that died a natural death. That that's the tradition. Yes. Yes, that's mm -hmm. the tradition. And he was not murdered. Um and um but he was beheaded. Oh no, no, no not no. not that's not John, John the that's John the Baptist. That's John the Baptist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm getting there all mixed up. That's okay. Too many Johns. Um, <laughs> um any other questions or comments? I'm sorry to keep you keep you over like i no, said no don't I, be sorry this is very interesting you know that <laughs> nobody said anything no 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 i don't no, think any or or unplugged or anything all right oh, thanks man. thanks everybody thank you thank you, thank you. Well, next next wednesday night we'll be doing the uh evening prayer uh it, it'll be both in person and uh and on zoom so i hope you'll be able to participate in that you know, and that br brings me to a question. Originally, uh, in our um, in our worship and music committee meeting, we talked about doing a a, a pre service something meal of some right. kind. Are we going to do that, or are we not? Um, I don't have a plan for doing <laughs> doing such yeah. a thing. Yeah. Okay. In light of Barb's situation, I think it would be a bad idea because you'd have to find somebody who's going to chair it. Okay. <laughs> I Let's think maybe I think maybe we'll let it go. Yeah. Okay. Too much happening. Yeah. Yep. Right. You better send um, out McDonald's. What was that, Diane? You better send out to McDonald's. <laughs> just get a whole bunch of big macs <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right thanks everybody thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good night. bye bye good night, good night.